Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys Trade Socks. I am Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And holy crap, someone that is near and dear to our hearts here, Charlie Munger, came out and said something not so nice about one of our favorite stocks here at this channel. Dylan hasn't seen this full clip yet, so we're going to get his actual reaction and we're going to talk a little bit about what he had to say about Alibaba stock. I just see Baba and Mistake, so that's not great for me. <laughs> Two stupid guys trade stocks. All right. Wait, are so, we doing the video first or the slides? Yeah, we'll do the video first. It, the video is from the Daily Journal meeting, com, uh, annual meeting. Daily Journal is the kind of entity that Charlie Munger owns his Alibaba shares through. That's where the public portfolio that we track is. Uh, so they have the annual meeting, and he answered a lot of questions, a lot of them to do with China and Alibaba stock in particular. So this is going to be a, probably a few minute long kind of section here, but it's kind of got the most important part that we want to talk about in this video. We'll let, let it play. You go it. Well, of course, it was a very interesting thing. Jack Ma was a dominant capitalist in Alibaba. Yeah. And one day he got up and made a public speech where he basically said the Communist Party is full of malarkey. They don't know their ass from their elbow. They're no damn good and I'm smart. And of course, the Communist Party didn't particularly like his speech. And pretty soon he just sort That's of disappeared true. from view for months on end. And now he's out of BYD. It was pretty stupid. It's like poking a bear in the nose with a sharp stick. It's not smart. And, and Jack Ma got way out of line by popping off the way he did to the Chinese government. Yep. Absolutely and of course agreed. it hurt Alibaba. And, but I regard Alibaba as one of the worst mistakes I ever made I, in, in thinking about Alibaba, I got charmed with the idea of their position on the Chinese internet. And I didn't stop to realize they're still a goddamn retailer. It's, it's gonna be a competitive business, the internet. It's not gonna be a cakewalk for everybody. Wow. Mm, Just about okay. China in general, I had a lot of questions that came in regarding that. I'll ask this one from Wilco, uh, Wilco Schutzendorf um, is coming in from Walnut Creek, California, who just what said previously name. you stated that despite certain yeah. shortcomings, sure China was generally moving in the right direction. However, with the recent actions taken by the Chinese government, such as capriciously punishing technology and educational companies, declining to import effective COVID vaccines, escalating threats towards Taiwan, do you still maintain that China is a viable investment option for foreign capital, or is China experiencing a similar regression as Russia has seen under Putin's leadership that culminates in the invasion of Taiwan? Wow. Well, that's a very good question, of course. Mm. But, but I would argue that the chances in uh, a big confrontation from China have gone down, not up, because of what happened in the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the Chinese leader is a very smart, practical person. And it doesn't... Russia went into the Ukraine as it looked like a cakewalk. I don't think yeah. Taiwan looks like such a cakewalk anymore. I think it's off the table in China for a long, long time. You know what that might be? I think that helps the prospects of investors who invest in China. And the other thing that helps in terms of the China prospects are that you can buy the best, you can buy better, stronger companies at a cheaper valuation in China than you can in the United States. So you're getting, the extra risk can be worth running given the extra value you get. Exactly. That's why we're in China. So it's like we prefer being in some foreign <laughs> He's country. He's 99, Dylan. I know, he's killing I'd rather be in Los Angeles right next to my house. You know, it'd be more convenient. All right, that, that's pretty I much it. I find that many investments, watch. you know, right next to me. So I do actually, I do agree with the take on um, the invasion of Taiwan, right? Because when this was big. originally supposed to happen with Russia and Ukraine, it was supposed to be, I mean, supposed to be in terms of Russia's point of view, yeah. like very, very easy. And it has been anything but very, very easy. I do not like that he said Baba may have been the biggest mistake he's ever made. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's that's the real shot fired of it, this this kind of meeting here. Uh, so, 
I get some of his points. That's why actually I put a couple of slides together here about, you know, reasons why Alibaba hasn't become like this phenomenal investment that maybe we once hoped it would. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about here. So he's talking about competition, right? So Alibaba still owns a big chunk of the market yeah. there, but their chunk of the market has been ever eroding. All right. Uh, this is from 2021. Yeah, they, so you you have JD kind of nipping at their heels a little bit as far as like their their growth rate's been even larger. That's why the stock has done well and Pinduoduo as well. You know the, these other companies that I don't know if they really amount to much as far as that at this point, but they're still in the marketplace, so they still have the potential to, you know, kind of continue to erode market share for a company like Alibaba. Yeah, the, right. The, the, I mean, so there's so many different aspects of Alibaba's business. Right, like you, you've done multiple videos where you show the little. I don't know why they always do like a animal logo for each yeah. individual separate thing, right? I but I feel like is JD a competitor? Absolutely, hundred percent. But not in all aspects of Alibaba's business. They each have their individual areas as well. So, are they retailer? Yes, they're the Amazon, but they're also like PayPal. There's a lot of things. There's a you know. I I agree. I agree. Like, it, it, is it as rosy as like a complete and utter monopoly? No, I'll, you know, of course not. I think that's ridiculous. But you know, are they still in direct competition with other companies? Yeah. yeah. And you know, because of the control of the Chinese the Communist Party, ha has their moat like widened over the last couple of years? Probably not. You know, I would say no. It's shrunk over the last couple of years, which is something that you never want to see as a business owner, right? The other kind of point I wanted to make here, and this is kind of goes right along with that competition, is so this is from Macro Trends. This is their, I really want to talk about their margin down here. You notice how the, you actually probably want to move yourself over yep, a little bit. You it. notice how it's just like a, a downward slide, downward trend throughout the entirety of this. And what drives that, right? It drives, it's driven by competition in part. It's driven by the fact that they've had to pivot to lower margin businesses. They recently they had their acquisition of Sunart to the grocery store. You know, the, the, yeah, the revenue has been able to grow because of it, but they've been going towards a lower margin business. And that's going to be probably the trend you're going to see for a while. They haven't given us any guidance as to where they think it will stabilize either, which is unfortunate. So, okay, here's the argument for that and, and pro of Baba. I, I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible, but obviously, you know, I have like 20 grand of Baba. So, um, you know, uh, the, so a Amazon historically for years has been a very, very low margin business. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, five years ago, don't quote me, it was around there a long time ago, they would make 500 million net profit for the entire company. Right. But they're also grabbing, they're putting their hands or they're, in, unless you don't, yeah. am, don't like Amazon talons in uh, <laughs> every single aspect, like all of a sudden they're now in Whole Foods. Like, where did that come from? No one saw that coming at all. So yeah. I just, I, yes, it's a lower margin business, but there's something to be said for attracting an ecosystem where people will be like, all right, I'm going to do Baba for all aspects of business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, they have their their Amazon Prime equivalent, that 88 VIP. I can't remember the exact number. I want to say it was a, around a pretty even number, like 100,000 or something like that, or uh, no, it been larger than that, but like uh, subscribers to their kind of VIP service, which is equivalent to Amazon Prime. Uh, they do have a lot of touches, right? They have over a billion monthly active users in China alone. So there's a lot of touches and contacts with Alibaba Corporation. So to some degree, you get kind of ingrained in the ecosystem a little bit and people will continue to return to you for other purchases. So yeah, I, I get that. Um, I completely agree and understand that they, they've unfortunately cannibalized higher margin businesses for these lower margin businesses. That's what you're kind of seeing here. And this has been a trend through the last two years. So this is the one they look the revenue. Cloud has been disappointing, to be fair. Yeah, that's the next slide. <laughs> oh, my bad. I haven't seen the presentation. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. But this can, uh, could customer management kind of services here down 7% year over year, as opposed to direct sales up 6% year over year. What you're seeing there is them pivoting towards that lower margin business, them being the actual retailer. Customer management was more when they were at, acting as a kind of service provider where they were simply had the platform and merchants on Alibaba's websites, Tmall and Taobao, were selling directly to the consumer at that point. Now they've kind of taken over the role where they're also like the actual retailer of these objects. And obviously you're moving physical merchandise has a much lower margin. At first, yes. 
like just how Amazon did it without their own trucks. And then a decade later, there's Amazon vans everywhere. And I don't know about you, I can't remember the last time I was not in, I was either, I'm only doing Costco and, and Amazon. I don't really do anything yeah. else. Well, Costco is another big Charlie Munger stock. He, that one he's talked a lot about as well in the past. But the the interesting thing from like kind of, uh, you know, my perception of this is, yeah, it, you know, it's not great. Yes, you're getting more and more touches over time. And yeah, there, there's a lot of competition. But what has Charlie Munger done about this? He did trim back and deleverage his position a little bit. Um, there was another question there you would have probably loved where it was uh, someone, Becky threw at him, a, a Charlie Munger, an old quote about his where the the three most dangerous things to a uh, uh, man are uh, liquor, ladies, and leverage. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That should be a shirt. Uh, so much yeah, to make yeah. that shirt. Yeah, we can we can work on that. Um, but the, he still owns Alibaba shares. So even if he considers it his greatest mistake of all time, like why is he still invested in it then, I guess? I don't know. He, well, um, it, it, it could be what, – what's the term in, in poker? Um, oh, like sorry, a sunk cost? Committed. Well, he's yeah. committed. He's got so much yeah. in it already, right? Yeah. And, you know, this is not nice to say of Charlie Munger. One, he's a genius. I don't think he's going to live another 10 years. I mean, if he does, awesome. But for me, yeah. this is a hold for 10 years. So it's there. we have different game plans. True. I mean, 99, man, that is damn impressive. And he's still with Dude, it. Dude, <laughs> yeah, he's killing it. I mean, that's just like the greatest example of why you should just always read. People like retire these fall off a cliff. That guy's a, yeah. him and Warren Buffett are awesome. Yeah, no, I give my respect for that. So this is kind of like what a lot of the uh, early kind of Alibaba valuations were based upon is that this is their own internal guidance where they were they were expecting this absolute massive, I think it was like a 47% CAGR o o over the next five years from 2020 to 2025. Unfortunately, that, that really hasn't materialized. You know, Alibaba Cloud is cash flow positive and it has been, I want to say, for almost a year now, something like that, but it, weekly so. And, you know, you have not seen anywhere near this growth. Yes, you know, they talked about the fact that they had a massive headwind because they have a transition of probably TikTok, no one knows for sure, to, you know, Oracle kind of cloud. So they did have that massive headwind they had to overcome. But, you know, this, this, if the whole segment was growing at a 47% CAGR, like as this implies, then you probably would have seen a much more brisk, you know, growth rate. So yeah, they, they've under delivered in that round. I, I, I still wouldn't go so far as to call this, you know, greatest mistake I've ever made or anything like that, to that degree. That that was a little bit uh, extreme, but definitely not uh, as much roses and kittens as uh, okay puppies. Definitely not the <laughs> biggest mistake hoped. I've ever made. But that's just because I made oh, yeah. some pretty badass mistakes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, as of right now, I own I think forty five or so shares, and I have a a, a put at ninety five, which may get exercised. That's going to be going through to the next. Uh, um, next monthly expiration in March, and that would potentially make me buy another 100 shares. The kind of major thing we're going to get a little insight into Alibaba is this week, February 23rd, we have it coming up, earnings, earnings coming out. So we'll be able to do a little uh, more analysis after we've seen what the most recent quarter looks like for them. Yeah, and if you guys haven't seen uh, Vinny's uh, videos for Baba earnings, I'm pretty reliant on them because, frankly, they're, it's the most confusing report ever because there, oh, there's so many different aspects of their business. So stay tuned. You, 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 know, you do a pretty solid job on that. So uh, I don't even attempt it. It's too, it's too complicated. Yeah. No, I hear you. All right, guys. Well, let us know what you think about uh, Charlie Munger calling this the greatest mistake he's ever made. Oof.